True statistic. Before LBJ and the Democrats and the Great Society Act, I always think, what happened, what happened to black America, you know? When I look at my grandfather's generation, they're all dressed well, the music was rich, talking about family, talking about love. People always tell me, you're not a part of black culture. What black culture do you think you're a part of, right? Because I was raised in a black culture that was meaningful and was family oriented, right? I, this, what I see today, the hip hop music I'm listening to today, the gang stuff, that was not black culture. Who convinced you that was black culture? How did we get here? Well, you look back and before, LBJ, when he established the Great Society Act, which was welfareism for America, at that time, the single motherhood rate in black America was 23%. And they said, oh my God, it's an epidemic. 23% of black children are growing up without a father in the home. That's an epidemic, they said. Fast forward to today, and the single motherhood rate in the black community is 78%. He understood what he had to do. He went after the black family. Shocking statistic, you can look it up. In the 1950s, when Jim Crow was established in this country, black Americans were outpacing white Americans in terms of economic growth. Why? Because the families were together, communities were together, right? So LBJ, who was an avowed racist that was in office, you can read about the things that he said about keeping black people, keeping those N words, hard R, voting Democrat for the next 200 years, right? You can read a book about Lyndon Baines Johnson. He realized that he had to establish something that would keep black Americans married to the government rather than to the fathers of the home, and that was the Great Society Act. That was welfareism. That was turning to black women, women and saying, if you do not marry the father of your children, we will give you more money. It's an incentive. We've seen these incentives because now, if black America was the experiment, if that was a local experiment, we are now seeing that globalized within the American community. We saw a little test of this during COVID. People were saying, I'm not going back to work because the government's giving me checks. How quickly, how fast it happened that people did not want to go to work because the government was going to give them something just enough to get through the day. Why should I have to get up and go to work? And so when you revisit those topics of leftist ideas, suddenly it starts to fall into that scope of family and you say, okay, so what is up with transgenderism? Tell me who would be able to grow up and have a productive family if they have already fundamentally altered their bodies via surgeries, via hormones. You can't go backwards on that. I think you can just press pause on when you start interrupting puberty, the infertility that naturally comes with that. Seeing all these videos that are being suppressed of people that have trans regret, that are talking about how they were convinced when they were young, when they were just probably a kid saying stupid stuff, that they were somehow in the wrong body because parents want to virtue signal and show how open and accepting they are. When you try to even further understand this push, because when I say that there is a push to make everybody want to identify as either lesbian, gay, or queer, I don't really even know what the A stands for. I stopped learning after the T because I just, just the letters being tacked on. What is that about? Well, if you have lesbians that are married, they're gonna have to turn to IVF treatments and find a sperm donor. It makes it very difficult to just establish a family. You have gays that are married, it's very difficult to just have a family. It just disrupts the family unit. So they need to, to demonize natural families. They need to demonize the nuclear family, make it seem like that's something that is perverse. Aspiring just to grow up and to have a relationship, a man and a woman, to have children, that normal function they are trying to abnormalize. Then you take a look at climate change and you say, what does that have to do with family? Well, pay attention to the headlines. Pay attention to what they're telling children. They're telling children that it would be wrong for them to bring children into the world, to grow up and to aspire to start families because it's bad for the planet. That's actually what they're telling kids, that starting families is bad for the planet. In fact, they gave Harry and Meghan an award, an actual award, for agreeing to only have two kids. You heard AOC say that she, you know, she wasn't gonna start a family. She didn't know about starting a family because of climate change and how irresponsible it would be. And I could be okay with that. Sorry, right, AOC. Not gonna fight her on that one. 